Hey friends, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. So today I have the Wonderland stamp set here from Alta News, some watercolor paper, my Misty, some Hero Arts embossing powder. This is my embossing tool thing that stops the embossing powder from sticking everywhere. And we're going to stamp our images out using some Versamark ink. And then I do take an embossing pen just to finish filling out the petioles of that bottom flower so it reaches the end of the card. So we're going to stamp and emboss that and do all that jazz. And in the interim, this card came because I watched um, Daniel Delinardi's live video last week where he did a card using Payne's Gray and I was like, ooh, I gotta try that. So the only Payne's Gray I have in my collection currently is the Core Payne's Gray. Now the beautiful thing about Core paints is that they use um, what they call Aquazole, which is their own binder. So it's not honey based and it's not gum arabic or anything of that nature. It's their own patented binder. Um, which means their paints dance and flow in water crazy. You'll see that a little bit later. So we're going to start off here just by taking a flat brush and putting a light coat of this color on top. And then I take a piece of paper towel and I dab off a bunch of that Payne's Gray. And in between all of these layers, I am letting it dry completely naturally. So I am walking away. Um, I had about 45 minutes of footage for this card. Reality, it probably took three or four hours with letting everything dry. I did quit at one point and finished it at the end of the week once the work week was over because I was lazy and tired after work and didn't want to come down here and paint and film. So I didn't. Um, so I'm starting off now just by taking a wash of that Payne's Gray and tucking it into different corners and areas of the flower and blending it out with some clean, clear water to create some shadows around those embossed images. Now, the embossing I wasn't too particular about, so it's not super solid. And you'll see a little later on when I start dropping in some more wet washes that it jumps um, into the flower and blends into the flower and I left it and I think it looked absolutely beautiful in the end as you guys probably saw um, at the beginning of the video with the picture of the finished product. So we're just going to carry that on all the way around the card. Like I said, this one was a time consumer, um, not in terms of like painstaking to stand here and do it, more in terms of being patient and letting the paints dry on their own, not forcing it with a heat gun because with watercolor, um, as long as the paper is wet, that paint is moving and the paper is wet until it's room temperature. So if you're touching that paper and it doesn't feel wet, but it's cool, it's actually still wet inside and that watercolor is still moving. And I like to allow things to dry naturally just to um, lose a little bit more control. I've learned to really appreciate what watercolor does on its own. So after we got to this point, you can see there, I just put a clear coat of clean, clear water over it. And now you'll see what I was talking about, about these core paints. Um, that Aquazole binder just explodes into water. And this is, I'll do this again a little bit later on, but you can see how I touch it to the paper and that paint takes off and goes wherever I, wherever it wants to. And I don't have a lot of control over where it's going and I really do love the way it looks. So you can see how it's bleeding into the flowers and I'm just letting it go and letting it do its thing and continuing to drop that on in all the kind of the same areas around the flower, sort of letting it frame out those embossed images and the stamped images that we did there. And then we will let it dry again. Once I finish putting paint on, I guess I'm going back one more time, making it a little bit darker in those points. Um, you'll also notice the drying shift with Payne's Gray. It goes on really, really dark. And once it dries, it lightens up a lot. That's part of why I added as many layers as I did. Um, so this is the week later. Anyway, that's part of why I added as many layers as I did is just to um, get that depth and get that really, really modeled look to it. I didn't want to go too dark right away. And then when you put it on and it looks really dark and then it dries and it's a lot lighter because of that drying shift. So it's just taking your time and building up those layers until it finally looks the way you want or with what you're happy with. You can only control paint like watercolor paint so much. That's one of the beauties of them is that they kind of have a mind of their own. So here I pulled out my little Mexico palette and I'm taking the Payne's Gray right out of the half pan. Um, I wanted it really, really dark. So I figured if I take it out its mass tone directly out of the pan, as opposed to trying to mix it on my little ceramic palette up at the top, I would get a little bit darker of a tone and it worked wonderfully. So I'm going through and just adding that back into those same nooks and crannies and crevices and areas around the flowers that I did before 
taking some clean, clear water and blending them out into the remainder of the card. You'll see when I'm going in and dropping that pigment in, I hold the brush right close to the tip, right up near the bristles. That's for control so I can put it in precise, like be a lot more precise about where I put the color. And then when I start blending it out with water, you'll see me back up on the handle and get a little looser and a little more flowy with the brush. Um, it's kind of like losing control and not being as particular when I hold it back further. I used to do it um, by telling myself I needed to do it just to get loose. And now it's become a habit. I don't even notice that I adjust my grip um, on the brush as I'm doing things until I watch the video back to do the voiceover like this. It happens naturally now. I've been doing it for so long that it's just kind of normal that when I want to blend things out and have a looser look, I hold it back further on the brush and I rotate back and forth between being nice and tight up at the top and then at the back. So now when I went over it with water, it um, muddled up the paint and kind of let things bleed. I have a big brush dropping in a bunch of pigment, picking some up. I'll dab some off of those flowers. Then I'll go in and add a couple more drops of color in there and let it kind of blend around. I'm just playing to see what I want. At this point, I'm not even sure I'm going to like this project in the end. I do, but I wasn't sure at this point. Now it's dry. I'm going to add another row of tape border and we're going to go in and go really dark one last time. So it's the same process over and over and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse by saying it, but I'm just going back over top of the same areas I did before using the same process, um, putting in some really dark color, letting it flow out into the water and do its thing and it'll finger and make absolutely a beautiful mess out of itself. And I think it's absolutely glorious in the end. I did grab a tinier brush to drop in that pigment just because I'm using such a strong pigment load. I didn't want the whole thing to end up black. I did want or end up with the Payne's gray color. I did want some of those lighter tones and things that we had achieved through this whole process. So that's why I am dropping it in with the darker or with the smaller brush with the darker pigment there. And then I'm just putting the water on with our larger brush. And we're getting close to the end, guys. I did lose some of the footage of me putting the card on the card base and all of that. So this is a slimline card. My card base measures eight and a half by seven, seven, yes. And then my card front is a quarter of an inch smaller. So once I stamped out that sentiment, the Hello Star Shine, I traced over it with some white gouache and that finished it off, guys. So I will have everything linked in the description box below. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a ton. And if you aren't subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description box down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye for now.